Do you think that in 2010 or 11, do you think that drill made the city crazier, or do you think the city was getting crazier and drill just happened to be like the soundtrack of that? Nah, yeah, more so it was already crazy for real, you know? That didn't just affect the city, it affected the whole world for real. Mm -hmm. Like they doing that shit everywhere. Everywhere's the normal now. Get a gun, drive a stolen car, you know, who got the most bodies, who known for doing this, who known for doing that. That's the new normal right now. Especially when you see and then they mention them and glorify them. So now they think like, okay, if I do this, then such and such will mention me and he'll know who I am. He'll know my name. So like I said, it's just normal. So when you first started rapping, it wasn't for no like response to anybody. You was actually just doing it for the art form. Nah, uh, yeah, it was more so like this went on way before time for real with the different killings and shit got publicized in 2010, 2011, 2012. But it's been going on like that forever. Once it became mainstream, then that's when people start paying attention to it and it's talked about and showed everywhere. And a lot of places glorified when it ain't really what it, you know, it could look like it's fun and there's something going on, but then when you're really in that it ain't fun. Cause you gotta think you can't go home. A lot of niggas move out of where they come from, riding different cars, toting guns. They don't show the part, and they scared, having to look over his back everywhere he go. Can't take his kids nowhere. Can't go to the store with his grandma. Can't do this. Can't do that because of the shit they do on the internet or the shit that they do on the street. So you know, it be fucked up. Like I said, 15, 16 years old, you smoking weed. Then they got people making pills, pressing pills up. So the shit is real. They just taking whatever they tell. Oh, we high, gun. And then, oh, yeah, we finna go do this for this person. But the shit will never stop for real. Ain't nothing nobody could do about that. So you don't have any hope that it could stop at some point? It's too much blood shit. Mm. Too much. And then you got a lot of people who still grieving and hurt from that shit still to this day. And it happened a long time ago. So they still feel like, oh, so-and-so might have did something there. You know, got our lick back, but I still want to get my lick back too. That's even with the pushing piece. Like, I believe half of that shit is real, but majority of that shit is fake just because this person popular and that person popular. So we can link up and get more popular if they see us together. It ain't really no piece pushing because. So you don't think it's genuine? Some of it's not, nah. I ain't going to say all of it, but some of it's not because where is, do you see these people linking up? with people that's not popular and that's not in the media and that's not entertainers or something. They ain't leaking up in no hoods with some of these little trying to show them and tell them something different because they do look up to these At one point, these talking about killing and just like the some of these didn't look up to. So it's only right, you know, to f tell them the truth. Man. That's real. It ain't, it ain't something that I would really recommend. So I tell everybody like I tell y'all, the streets ain't for everybody, and it's a cold game. So the best way to go is the job and who got the nine to five. Even though you might laugh at him now, later on, he become the manager, the general manager. You see riding around in these nice cars with jewelry, work jobs, get up in the morning, engineers and shit work on the power line. They don't tell you that the jury finance, but they still acting like they in the streets. Look up to that, so that's what they want. That's what they see. A lot of times when people talk about California, they describe the culture as being like older dudes who maybe went to prison for 10 years or whatever, and then they come back and then they're basically like using the younger generation to put in work on their behalf or to scare people on their behalf or even to like rob people with them or, or do whatever, carry pistols for them so that they don't have to risk uh, going back or whatever. Do you feel like Chicago is like that or is Chicago more just young kids on some crazy shit? Mm. They can get out of jail and get killed. What you see most of them get out of jail, get killed. These little honoring them. They got their own mind. Like I said, they going about these these thirties. I ain't even, to my knowledge, I ain't even know such as perk thirties. So they going about these pills, taking these pills, and acting crazy, man. And then, like I said, they normalize it in the music. And they look up to them. And then they wonder why the city be so up. What were you like as a as a kid though? Like as you started to get to your teen years, and 
like that. I was always smart, you know. I never got in trouble in school and shit like that. I was the type of that I would tell you after school, I got you, though. But during school, I wasn't finna let them call and tell my mama that I was fucking up. You feel me? Not just in school fighting the teachers. That used to happen once every blue moon, literally. And we, I never seen a blue moon. We ain't seen no kids fight no fucking teachers, bro. The teacher was like your mama. The teacher had permission to whoop your ass. Mm. Yeah, like, you see that in a lot of cities, like, where the kids, or, like, the people just don't give a f what the cops got to say. Like, when I was a younger dude, if there was a person smoking fucking meth on the side of the street or whatever, they were getting arrested. You know, now, as time goes by, you start to see more and more American cities where they'll let somebody be getting fucked up on the side of the street, or there's loads of prostitution going on, and the cops aren't even considering busting that anything and it's it's kind of like the rule of law has become like weakened more and more as the years go by to the point where people aren't really like scared of the cops or whatever in the same way i mean shit. back in the day the police used to fuck you up they wouldn't just lock you up you make them chase you they beat your ass when they catch you mm. gonna make you sore for making them run just like that see nowadays they got a lot of laws a lot of cameras Back then, it wasn't all these cameras, so mm. everything that they was doing wasn't getting caught on camera. So they'll f you up, take you to the station, say you resisted, and that was that. You feel me? Now they got cameras there where people catching the cameras, so they a little bit more, you know, leery on what they do and how they do, especially with their cameras everywhere. You know. Mm. So you said you was like a good kid. What age you feel like you jumped off the porch? Like where you? Um. Uh, I can't really say no age. I jumped off the porch. I got, I caught my first case when I was nine, but, you know, I always been a little, like I said, when it was school hours, it was school hours. I wasn't f***ing that up. You, Adam, nobody you know can hide me, f*** that up and get my ass beat. My mama didn't play that shit. School was school, you hear me? After school, it's game on. We can do whatever, you know? But I really started going to jail when I was like nine, and then I went to jail every year up until I got like 16, and then I stopped because I knew I became an adult. What kind of case you catch at nine? Uh, you know the movie Love Jones? Uh, you ever heard of Love Jones with yeah. Sidney Poitier? Yeah. They filmed it in the school right there on my block, and she was walking past, and the trailers was right there, and broken ass took some <laughs> what? My homie, his, uh, he took some home, and his mama made him go back and tell and take the back. So they came to school and caught me with some of this. I had the jacket on. <laughs> it was an Eddie Bauer jacket. I needed that. What the fuck? That's a crazy story. Straight up. Damn. Um, that was my first case. But so then, did that slow you down at all, or that didn't bother you? No, nah, I was just a juvenile. So, you know, in Chicago, they had the thing, you go by points. So I wouldn't always just get locked up, locked up. But every summer, I would just get in trouble. It was just too much time on my hands. Like I said, when I got like 16, right before I can go to the county, I ain't getting no trouble after that till I was like 20. Then that's when I went to call my first adult case. So at this time, because you're, you're, you're older than a lot of the people that was rapping back in the day, right? I, was, I think you're in your 30s at least. Yeah. So you would be more considered like an OG in um, Chicago. You, would, you could call me that. I'm still a young nigga, though. Yeah, but in Chicago <laughs> compared to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Because a so, lot of these niggas is 17, 18, 19, definitely. So wh who was the first person from, like, THF to start rapping? Like, because you started battle uh, rapping first, you, and then you lost the battle or something? Hell no. Nah, I ain't lost no battle. Oh, so you did lose the battle, <laughs> but you lost uh, battle hell, rap. What? Uh, Pull it up, man. You done f***ed up, Remo. I thought you was my man. That said I lost the battle. I didn't know about I, this arc. Hey, so you had, uh, you was battle rapping? No, nah, I, I got a battle, yeah. But you can pull it up. Don't ever say I lost, man. I don't like that. I'm a big competitor, my boy. You don't like news nine? No. All right, so so what got you into battle rapping then? It's just something I could do, too. You know, with the words, I'm kind of nice. Because, I, like I said, in school, yeah, wasn't no playtime. Pay attention. Get good grades. But after school, that's your ass. You remember, you you went to one of them schools. You from down south where a nigga do like this and let you know at 3 o'clock. I got you, boy. <laughs> I get you. Other than that, like, I wasn't playing around the school, though. So, like, I don't want to play that. 